The old building sat on the outskirts of town, empty and alone. After hundreds of nights filled with teen explorers and ghost hunters damaging it, the owners finally installed a security system. Guards would patrol on the weekends, and the place became much harder to break into. In its heyday, it had been a hospital for those with tuberculosis and other diseases. Known by the locals as the Old TB Hospital, the real name for it was the Franklin County Center for Respiratory Illness. The death count was unknown officially, but it was rumored to have been in the thousands over five decades of operation. Even with the increased security, there were attempts to break into the building almost monthly. After what happened one night in June of 2019, however, no one wanted to go near the building. The media coverage of the trial that followed one overnight excursion would rival some of the more well-known murder cases from history, with those who followed it being split on the truth. Andrew and John had been friends since childhood. Their mutual love for all things spooky brought them together in elementary school and carried them all the way into adulthood. It was only natural that they would decide to form a paranormal research group in college, convincing a handful of mutual friends to join them. The first three years were good, but slow. Everyone in the team worked their normal jobs through the week, spending the weekends on investigations. They weren't famous enough for a TV show, but they would upload their exploits to the internet, edited together by their team tech guru, Charlotte. This series became popular over time, hitting a point where they were earning some money and finally making enough money to make it into a real business. Andrew was the financial brains of the group, with John being the one to find and schedule investigations. Some individuals and even companies paid the group to figure out if the building that they lived or worked in was haunted. Outside of these paying gigs, they would usually get free entry into otherwise locked locations. Late one Friday evening, John received an email from the owner of the old TB hospital looking for a well-known team to come out and debunk the idea that their building was haunted. He spent a couple of hours researching the building, ultimately deciding to run the idea by the team on Monday. After discussing it in their morning stand-up meeting, John replied to the email and let the owners know that the team would be happy to come out and investigate, but he cautioned that they did not focus on debunking or proving things, only gathering evidence to be evaluated later. Several emails and a phone call later, and the team was on their way to the Franklin County Center for Respiratory Illness. They were a couple of members short, but they had more than enough equipment to make up for that. Arriving at the old hospital around 2 in the afternoon, they met with the owner and spent a couple of hours walking through the facility and learning its history. Once they were comfortable with the layout, they started planning where to place the cameras, motion sensors, temperature sensors, and other gear that would help them monitor the property as well as the team. After filming what would be the intro to their video and getting a few photos for the teaser, they grabbed a quick sandwich from the cooler and started their investigation. The atrium acted as their base of operations, being central to the floor plan of the building. They had monitors for everything and Charlotte would be spending the evening watching the cameras and meters as Andrew and John moved from room to room with some of the smaller equipment to try to capture EVPs, EMF readings, and other real-time interaction. The rest of the crew will be standing by to assist with filming or whatever else needed done. Starting in one of the patient rooms, Andrew set a voice recorder down on a table and started asking questions. Is anyone here? He said, looking around for any sign of movement. Can you tell us your name? John piped in. They sat in the quiet of the dark room for several minutes before John suggested they try with the voice box. It was more real time than the recorder, though they didn't have much success with it normally. Turning on the device, John started asking questions. Who was in the room with us? Silence. 
Is there anyone here? Still nothing. After a few more minutes of no activity, they decided to move on. Grabbing the gear, they were about to move to an office down the hall when the two-way radio went off. Guys, I just saw some movement in the third floor, camera 303, Charlotte said. Wasn't that the spot the owner said they found a body a few years ago? John asked. Yeah, by the nurse's station. Maybe we'll have more luck up there, Andrew replied, heading for the doorway. Climbing the stairs, the pair moved slow and deliberate, listening for any possible noise as they passed each floor. The building had been extremely quiet since they arrived, which wasn't overly surprising. The oddest part of the whole investigation had been the owner's insistence that the place wasn't haunted. Most of the people they worked with seemed to want a ghost or two to be found, but this one was almost begging them not to find anything. Reaching the third floor, they moved into the hallway and looked toward the area Charlotte had reported seeing movement. Hey, did you happen to see what moved up here? John asked over the radio. It looked like something fell off the counter, but I couldn't be completely sure. Charlotte replied. Moving closer to the nurse's station, the two men crept around and looked for anything that looked out of the ordinary. Seeing nothing that stood out, Andrew turned the voice recorder back on and set it on the counter while John readied the EMF reader and the voice box. Once everything was in place, John spoke up. Is there anyone here with us? It seemed for a brief moment that this would be no different than the lower floor. Then a voice came through the voice box. Leave, it said. Andrew and John both jumped back, looking at each other with wide eyes and gaping mouths. That's the clearest I've ever heard that damn thing, Andrew said. We might actually be onto something here. Uh, what's your name? Why do you want us to leave? John said, moving the EMF reader around the room. Sick here, the voice responded. Yes, you probably were very sick, but not anymore, John said. That's real nice, man. Make fun of them for being dead. I'm not making fun of them. It's a fact, and they probably aren't sick anymore. I don't know what you guys are doing up there, but the temp just dropped like five degrees, and the camera went fuzzy for a sec, Charlotte radioed. We're getting some responses up here. I'm going to try to set up the pod, John replied. Reaching into his bag, John pulled out a little device that looked like a large soup can. It had some small LED lights on the top of it and a small knob protruding from the spot in the middle of the lights. Setting it down on the floor, he flipped a switch to turn it on. The LED lights flashed bright. Four red, four yellow, four blue, before shutting off. The knob flashed blue for a couple of seconds before switching to a projection of a green laser grid. Standing up, John observed the blue LEDs lighting up and smiled. As he moved further away from the device, the yellow LEDs took over for the blue lights and finally the red lights were the only ones shining until they too went out as he reached the edge of the radius. I love that thing, Andrew said with a smile. It's a shame we don't get to use it more often, but maybe this time we'll get some results. Pretty lights. The voice box went off again. Yes, they are pretty. Uh, why don't you get closer and check them out? John said as his eyes met Andrew's. They weren't used to having so much happening so early. They usually had to sit around in silence for hours before getting this kind of interaction and it was never really as clear as it was now. The owner of the building might not like it, but there was definitely something odd going on. As they watched, a shadow moved into the range of the green grid and the red LEDs lit up. The yellow LEDs flickered for a second, but whatever had entered the space seemed to vanish before it moved any further. Holy shit, dude! Did you see that? John said, as a massive smile crossed his face. Andrew didn't respond. He just stared at the grid, his eyes wide. Andrew? Are you okay? Andrew turned away from John and started walking down the hallway, 
further into the hospital wing. John stood frozen for a couple of seconds before following his friend. He thought that maybe Andrew had heard something and he was trying to keep quiet to avoid scaring it away. They crept along in silence for nearly two minutes before Andrew stopped in his tracks next to an open door. John recognized it from their earlier tour as an elevator that supposedly malfunctioned at one point, leading to the death of two nurses who didn't realize the car hadn't arrived when the doors opened. Moving up next to his friend, John looked around before turning to face Andrew. Hey man, is, is everything alright? Did you hear something? He whispered. Andrew just stared back, a hollow look in his eye. His face appeared to be drooping slightly on one side, and John was just about to call for help on the radio when Andrew grabbed him and moved toward the elevator opening. I could have saved her if she hadn't been holding on so tight, Andrew said in someone else's voice. John spread his arms wide and held on to the sides of the opening as Andrew tried to force him into the shaft. He didn't have time to wonder what was happening to his friend as he struggled against the weight of the bigger man. Andrew, John, what the hell's going on? Charlotte's voice cracked through the radio. I see you at the opening to the elevator. Is everything okay? John wished he could reach his radio as he felt his arms growing weaker. Even as he pushed back with all his strength, he knew he didn't have much left in him. The sound of the footsteps in the stairwell told him that the rest of the crew was coming, but he didn't know if he could hold on. As the footsteps grew closer, he felt his shoulder pop and he lost his grip on the doorway. He fell into the shaft as one of the other guys grabbed onto Andrew and pulled him back. They yelled down, shining their lights into the void, but it was too late. Andrew started to panic, asking where he was and what was happening as the team held him down. They held him there until help arrived, restraining him as he yelled and cried. John's body was recovered from the bottom of the shaft, a look of horror frozen on his face. The motive for the murder was assumed to be money, but nothing solid could be proven. After the trial was over and the life sentence was handed down, people on both sides of the case still had the same question. What possessed him? Yeah.